few Sunday nights is showing you and letting you see and hear uh, what we call fake church. Now, a lot of people think that when you talk about the devil's preachers, that you're talking about people like Anton LaVey and Satanists and stuff like that. No, no, no. Uh, we're talking about preachers who are transformed in the ministers of righteousness. In other words, if you don't know the Bible, you'd know, you wouldn't know this fake. You wouldn't know they wasn't real. And we as Christians judge everything by the book. That's what we go by, by the book. We line it up with the book. And if, if, a, if an angel appears in your bedroom tonight and tells you one word that's against this book, you put the blood on him and tell him to go back to hell where he came from. A real angel will not tell you something contrary to this book. The real Holy Ghost will never lead you contrary or above and beyond the word of God, never. The, the, the canon is complete, y'all. We have the complete, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying God can't show us stuff. I'm just saying anything he does show you will line up with this, Amen. right? Amen. Amen. That's, a, that's a standard Christian belief. So look here in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and look at this. This is so weird. Verse four, for if he that cometh, you looking at it? He that cometh preacheth another Jesus. So there's another Jesus? They sure are. We saw it the other night. Or whom we have not preached. Or if you receive another spirit, that's a little s, so that's not the Holy Spirit. That's a spirit an atmosphere. You see that? Which you have not received. Or another gospel. And that's what I'm gonna talk about tonight. Which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Now, look at verse number 13. <whistles> verse number 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostle of Christ. So they're not real, but they're, tra they're acting like they're real. Verse number 14, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is of no great thing if his ministers, who's the his? The devil, Satan. The devil has preachers. The devil calls preachers. The devil has got preachers. His ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. Man, that's scary. Now, I'm gonna go over a few things right quick. I'm gonna spend a lot of time in video tonight because I got a lot to show you and I want you to pay attention, watch real carefully tonight. And um, the, the modern day church movement that you and I are seeing, folks, is, uh, is, uh, is disturbing, to say the least. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing more. Uh, things pop up on my phone and I look at it and every day almost, it's, it's a new church. And it's, it's the word or the wood or, the, or the, the book or the tree or the splinter or the rock or the flower or something, the, the flower. And I mean, it's just coming, they're coming out of everywhere. Every time you turn to, uh, go down the road, you see another uh, name for a church and you don't know what it is. It's like no label, no name brand. And the reason they do that is they, they say, well, we don't want to fuss about doctrine, so we just want to appeal to people of all doctrines. And that, uh, that's, that's, that's a good sentiment, but it don't work. You gotta believe something. You gotta believe something and stand there. You gotta be something and stand there. You can't be uh, just all over the place and not know what you believe. You gotta know what you believe and preach it. Now, there's some catch phrases that you'll hear these modern day preachers look like. And uh, I, I, I'm, it, it, it bothers me, it really does. Now, I wanna say up front tonight, something less so you won't take me wrong. I have no personal animosity toward any of these people. I don't even know these people I'm gonna show you tonight. I'm not trying to put myself up and them down. I'm, I'm the least of sinners. They may they might be better man than I am. We come right down to it. But I do want you to know the truth. And that's what I'm doing. I wanna show you the truth. And so you'll know truth from error. You need to understand truth from error. You need to know what you believe and why you believe it. Right? And so tonight, you'll notice these catchphrases. Um, here's, uh, here's seven words that you'll hardly ever hear a contemporary, modern day, mega church preacher use. Listen to these. 
These are all these famous I-O-N words. Sanctification, justification, glorification, redemption, salvation, propitiation, and condemnation. I want to preach on those seven words one of these days, a different one every night. There, all of those are great Bible doctrine words. Each of those teach a Bible doctrine. You very seldom hear them mentioned anymore. They have been replaced with these words. Now you're going to get it when I say these. Purpose. Connect. Season. Navigate. Journey. Campus. Campus. There's no such thing as that in the Bible. You know, we said we had a church here and we started one in Lenore. We started one in, we say our satellite, our sister church down over there. Now it's our campus. In, our campus. You know what they're trying to do? Impress college people. Amen. Come on, Brother Danny, preach. Uh, destiny. I heard a guy the other day, you know, he said, now, now you listen as I try to unpack the scripture today. I said, oh, shut up. I, that's what I want to say. I did. I, think, I mean, come on, man. I mean, uh, get up and preach the word of God. Quit sissifying around like that. Uh, we need some old uh, men of God that are leather lung, Bible believing, fire breathing, uh, Bible preachers, brother. That's what this generation needs. And I'm going to show you a little bit of that tonight. And uh, another gospel. Now, what is the gospel? Turn to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, and I'll show you what the gospel is. And then we'll look at some, uh, some other things here tonight. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 is your Bible definition of the gospel. If he that cometh preacheth another gospel, what is the gospel? 1 Corinthians 15. Look at it. Look at verse number, uh, number one. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. See? I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand by which also you're saved, if you keep in mind and memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Here it is. Here's the definition of the gospel. If anybody ever asks you what the gospel is, take them to this verse. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Not according to Jesus Christ Superstar not according to some Hollywood movie's version of what happened at Calvary. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. It happened exactly like the scripture said that it would. Not like it did in Jesus Christ Superstar or even the Passion of Christ for that matter. Anything, they'll mess it up somewhere, yeah, I can guarantee it. Hollywood couldn't get one right if their life depended on it. Now, look here, according to the scripture, verse number four, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. So the real gospel is the death, the burial, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ paying the price for all of our sin. That is the gospel. Now he said, he that cometh preacheth another gospel. I'm gonna look tonight, and I'm gonna show you some people uh, who are doing just that. All right, Wes, uh, get them back, down back there and let's go on a little journey here tonight. I want you to look at these preachers. These are very well-known preachers, very popular, have a tremendous following. I ain't got nothing against them. I'm just trying to show you what's right and, and what ain't. And there comes a point. We can disagree on some non-essential doctrines and still be brethren. But there comes a point where somebody preaches another Jesus or another gospel, well, that makes you a heretic. Yeah, and you got to understand that. All right, here we go. Let's start back here just a tad here. You got to have that blue mic on now. Look here. Here we go. From Luke chapter one. Some of you think that I don't give readings. Now, it's what he's doing. He's acting like he's drunk in the spirit. This church. Hey, isn't this pulpit good? You know, I... I Brokenness. And the stage I'm at at the moment is slouching. I've 
gone through the hiccup stage. And that ain't being drunk on the spirit. When, when they thought the apostles was drunk on the spirit, it's because they were up shouting and preaching the Bible. What? Look here. I've gone through the phase of heckling the preachers. Step down just a tad, that blew it. Mm. You say, well, Brother Danny, you're not, you shouldn't judge him. How, what makes you think that, that he is, uh, that he is uh, not in the spirit? Well, I'm, not say, I'm, I'm just saying it. Watch this. See what you think. I got a kiss off George today. I got a kiss off George today? Well, he's kidding. Uh, I can't imagine a man being drunk in the spirit and saying he got a kiss off George today. Look here what he said. <laughs> I told him he needs to get a shave. He got a kiss off George and told him he needed to get a shave. <laughs> oh, okay, now, be, before we take off, you know, before we go surfing. Luke, Luke. <laughs> Chapter two. Therefore do not heard from apostle. Here's Paul Bart comes from team 218. The word of faith movement seems to have misconstrued Paul's contrasting of the presence of the Holy Spirit with drunkenness as comparing it to liquid glow. Now, we'll take old Brandon here in just a second. Go Brandon, huh? All right, look. Uh, look, I've seen people do some strange things when they get full of God. I have. I've seen people run out the woods, shout, scream, and holler, and jump up and down, turn and flip, and everything else. There's nothing scriptural against that. But when it gets to be a weird spirit, and the kids even know it, See, the Holy Ghost, when the Holy Ghost moves in a service, he'll always do two things. He'll bless the saints and he'll convict the sinners. Always. That's his job. That's what he come to do. Now, listen to this guy. He has a big ministry and he's gonna give you, Brandon, uh, he's, he's, a, they, they call it drunken glory and he smokes these incense and, and on a, like a crack pipe and they all in his church, all these people get high off these natural things and think it's God and the Spirit. Listen to some stuff this guy says. You know, people say it's vodka. It's not. It's godka. It is. It's not vodka. It's godka. That's Brandon Barthrop who runs a channel. Now listen to this. Anymore. I renounce. <clears throat> Look at what he said. It's the devil. <laughs> They're the worst people I've ever met in my Talking life. Talking about Christians. Praise the Holy. Look the martyrs. They didn't think that. You know, reading all these guys saying, yeah, yeah, Christianity renounced being a Christian or repented from being a Christian. And they're Holy Ghost drunks on the glory. You know, they love Jesus, but the God saved me from your people, right? No, no, no. You don't, you don't say I'm drunk on the Holy Ghost and God saved me from all these Christian people. Listen, when you're full of the Holy Ghost, God's people are your people. We're not perfect, they're not perfect, but we don't say, God save me from your children. Lord have mercy, y'all, listen. Holy Spirit, and uh, so I just said it out loud, honestly, I was a little nervous. And does lines of. <laughs> Here he is worshiping. <laughs> That's a big YouTube ministry of thousands of people. Jesus, well, thank you for your crystals. The only way we're going to get into heaven. You know what he said? Thank you for your crystals. The only way we're ever going to get into heaven. That's a heretic. That's a heretic. That ain't just one person believing a little bit different and we shouldn't judge them. That's heresy. Listen to this. You think that was bad. <laughs> It's from smoking your gemstones, drinking your gold dust. Otherwise, we're pretty much screwed. This is what he says here. We don't need. We, 
We don't even need the blood. We got crystals. As a heretic, we don't need the blood. We got crystals. And you know what? People swallow that up like, oh, it's cool, man, cool. So we can still be a hippie and we can still get high and love Jesus. Yeah, them churches are all crazy. Yeah, man. They're getting the wrong spirit, y'all. Wrong spirit. Listen, buddy, the Holy Spirit will never tell you you don't need the blood. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> nope, afraid not, buddy. <laughs> Now look at this. Frankie can tell this ain't right. <laughs> when we get home now, he say, Daddy, why did you show that man that school? Said, All right. He can tell that ain't right. <laughs> Here's my buddy here. I don't know. He's got a tremendously I ain't ran my buddy. Uh, 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 look at his ministry. Listen to his ministry. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Oy, oy, oy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you, Lord. Uh, sometimes the Lord, the, I used to have a teaching gift. <laughs> I used to have a teaching gift. And I have a, a good gift of uh, getting struck mute in the middle of a service. One of those few guests. Why would God strike a preacher of the gospel mute in the middle of a service? Speaker. Lord, it ain't no wonder people's crazy. They go to the floor. Now, this guy here is a very well-known evangelist. Listen to what he says in his healing services. Now, you listen to this. Line it up with the book. Now, check me out. And if you can show me that I'm wrong, come and I'll, I'll get up next Sunday night and say, I'm sorry, I was wrong, I told y'all wrong. Listen to this. See if you believe this is the gospel. I said, God, I've prayed for like a hundred crippled people, not one. He said, that's because I want you to grab that lady's crippled legs and bang them up and down on the platform like a baseball bat. He said, God, I prayed for a hundred crippled people, nobody got healed, and God said... That's because I want to grab that cripple lady's legs and bang them on the platform like a baseball bat. God said that to him, is what he just said. I walked up and I grabbed her legs and I started going, Bing! Bing! I started banging them up and down on the platform. She got healed. And I'm thinking, God, why is not the power of God moved? Can you believe that? I'm reading the Bible where Jesus and the apostles grabbed somebody's legs and banged them on a platform. Turn this blue one down just a little bit, please. Now listen to this story. He said, because you haven't kicked that woman in the face. <laughs> and there's this old... Now look at them, them people are crazy. He just said, I don't know if you got it, he said, why isn't that woman healed? And God said, to kick that woman in the face. God told him to kick a woman in the face. Lady worshiping right in front of the platform. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The gift of faith came on me. He said, kick her in the face. Now, you discern. You get your Bible out and read it. And he said, the, whole, the gift of faith came on me and told me to kick that woman in the face. <laughs> With your biker boot. I inched closer and I went like this. Bam! And just as my boot made contact with her nose, she fell into the power of God. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The gift of faith came on me. Listen. He said, kick her in the face with your biker boot. I inched closer and I went like this. And just as my boot made contact with her nose, she fell into the power of God. And I now listen to this story. This guy runs from him, and he goes and jumps on him, beats him down. And I went like this. Bam! Dumb, and the gift of faith came on me. I said, what do I do, God? And God told me to just run him down. So I jumped up in the air, and I went, bam! And I hit him to the ground, jumped onto him, and got into a full mount. Ground and pound. I jumped on there and I was in a full mount. 
and something came over me, and instead of punching him, I grabbed him by the neck and started choking him. And I said, come out of him, devil! Come out of him, devil! Now I was in another meeting one time, and... Now the people sit there and say, oh, isn't that wonderful? No, you're, 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 you need to see a psychiatrist. The Lord don't tell them to grab somebody by the neck and choke them and say, come out of him, devil, like that. You can't find anywhere where they did stuff like that in the Bible. Look at here. I called out this Chinese gentleman. I'm talking about a Chinese gentleman. And all of a sudden, I went running down the aisle and I, I hit this guy so hard, it drove him back several feet. He hit the ground and his tooth popped right out of his mouth. Yeah. Oh, he hit him so hard his tooth popped out of his mouth. Boy, I tell you, I know there's some rednecks around here. He better not try that on. <laughs> It'd be his life's healing service. I can't do that. They'd say, God told me to blow your head off. <laughs> the truth is, the Lord didn't tell him to hit that man and knock his teeth out. Look here. This woman says God told her to howl like a wolf, like a coyote. She said, God said to howl and I said, I can't do that, Lord. And the Lord said, if I can't get you to do something in here for me, how are you going to witness out there? So she howls. I said, don't ask me to do that, Lord. He said, if I ask you, will you do it? He said, if I can't ask you to do something in your own house, how are you going to do it out there? So... Now, to be, to be fair about it, God had to do some people do some strange things sometimes. In the Bible, remember that one of the prophets, he had told him to lay on his side naked for about 30, uh, uh, 30 days or whatever it was. And, he, and sometimes God did tell people to do some weird things. So, I mean, we can't really say, well, see, well you can't. But, you know, the, the problem is this. The problem is this is when you get to that point in your church where it don't really matter what the Bible says, I know what I felt, you're getting in trouble when you get to that point right there. Everything has to be based upon the Word of God or cannot contradict the Word of God. So regarding... We're only just learning... How to party. We're only just learning how to party. There's that girl. Showed you on your night. head. Listen in. And just place it upon someone else. They're going to just get wrecked all over the room. You just going to, okay, don't, don't. That, uh, uh, Heidi Baker, I think her name is, she, she said, you put your hand on somebody else's head and they're going to get wrecked all over the room. Everybody in there is going to get wrecked and they're going to impart some kind of blessing. Now, the Bible does talk about laying on hands. The Bible does talk about us praying. The Bible does say, I might impart to you some spiritual gift. The Bible does say that. But you look at this, and you, you check it out with your Bible. Don't do it like it doesn't matter. Do it in the most impartation, most impartation that you've ever believed for right now. You're going to impart to each other. So you're going to take it, you're going to put it on somebody else's head, a watch, and then say, more, Lord. Whoa! More, Lord. Everybody, legacy, legacy, increase your glory. More. Try it again, try it again, try it again, try it again. More, Lord. There's fire, buddy. I think he's got it. Shake up, Baba. Now, this is her husband. Listen to this doctrine. I like to do altar calls first. <laughs> it's so much easier than preaching. He said, I like to do my altar calls first. It's so much easier than preaching. You don't have to think. <laughs> you don't have to think. <laughs> he's up. <laughs> That's dangerous, man. It's dangerous when you say you don't have to think. You can't do that, y'all. 
You better say, let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. You better learn how to think. And the Bible said, try the spirits, whether they have God. Now, I'm, look, look. I believe in healing. If you're sick here tonight, you come up here, we'll lay hands on you, we'll pray, we'll pray God. Listen, if God wanted me to speak Chinese right now, he's well able to do that. He can do anything. I'm not limiting God. I'm not putting God in a box like we get accused of doing. But uh, you, better, you better check your book out. Listen, listen to what this fellow says right here. Listen to this. If I was in a church and heard a man say this, something like this, I'd be mighty worried. <laughs> Some solid teaching, you know. Okay, now. Be, be. <laughs> now listen to this woman. Listen to that woman and look what he says. You know what he says? He said, she sounds saved to me. <laughs> I don't know, but she, she sounds saved to me. <laughs> That's how you judge if somebody's saved? I'm laughing like that? If you'll show me in the Bible where if you, you can tell somebody's saved by them laughing or crying or any other emotion, I'll give you a bunch of money. You are not, no evidence of being saved is laughing or crying or any other physical emotion. Now, there may be all that. You may laugh, you may cry. Nothing wrong with it, but that's not the evidence that you're saved. I mean, he's one of the, Jesus is one of the best saviors we have. Did you hear that? Jesus, Jesus is one of the best saviors we have. The best saviors we have. Jesus is one of the best saviors we have. Jesus is one of the best saviors we have. Jesus is one of the best saviors we have. And healing in that. Hey, but I tell you this. Jesus ain't one of the best saviors we have. He's the only savior we have. And he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, you might well bear with him. Them people falling for that stuff like suckers, buddy. You know why? They don't read the Bible. Nobody's ever taught them. They hadn't studied to show themselves approved. They hadn't and, and checked it out by the scripture. Can you feel that? Yes. Polio. 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 Bam! That we're gods. I am a little god. Yes. Yes. I have the his name. I'm god. one with him. I'm in covenant relation. Yes. I am a little god. Critic. No, you're not. No, you're not, little god. There's, there's the way preachers used to be in America. This was the most renowned evangelist in America up until the time of Billy Graham. This is Billy Sunday. One of the only known videos of him. The mic went out. Into the venue. There we go. Up ahead on the sidewalk out front of this guy. He's got this is one of the most well-known Christian authors in America. And he says he's going out to eat with his friends one night and there was a guy standing up on the corner with a bullhorn giving out tracts, preaching. Listen to what the modern day preachers think about a man standing on the street corner with a bullhorn preaching. Bullhorns, he's yelling all this stuff. At first I can't hear what he's saying, but as I get closer I hear the word sin and burn and hell and repent and then I hear the word Jesus. He's got all these pamphlets and he's quoting these Bible verses about the anger and wrath of God and how if I don't repent, I'm going to pay for it for eternity and, and how I might die. I might die tonight. It's like yeah, That's exactly right. What the man was telling you was exactly right, buddy. You know what's the matter with him? He's a compromiser going out to eat with his backslid friends or lost friends and was embarrassed when he saw an old fire and brimstone preacher out on the street corner. Hey, I got, I'm gonna tell y'all something tonight. You better never, ever, ever be ashamed of one of God's men out yonder preaching somewhere. And if you're ashamed of that in front of your friends, something wrong with you and your friends. That's God's man out there preaching. He said the guy was saying all these words like hell and judgment and damn. And he said, I just, I just don't understand that. I, what's that got to do with Jesus? That don't, that don't sound like Jesus. Really? Are you kidding me? My only chance, and then I might spend forever in misery. It might be your only chance, hell. that's right. I don't think it's what Jesus had in mind. And see, see, bullhorn guy, you're... It's confusing for my... It's confusing to my friends. He's telling the bullhorn guy, shut up, 
Leave it, don't preach. I'm out to eat with my friends and I don't want to be embarrassed by some hick, hellfire preacher like you. Now that's where we're living in this country tonight, people. The pressure will be on you to think, oh, you don't go over there where they preach on hell, do you? Yeah, that's not Jesus. He's a preacher. He pastored a church. And he said, that's not the message of Jesus. Friends and I, because some are Christians and some aren't, but we just don't get it. We just don't understand what all the condemning and, and the converting, we don't understand what it has to do with Jesus' message. Well, let me see if I can help you understand what that has to do with Jesus' message. Here's Jesus' message. Matthew 23, 15. Woe, uh, uh, you'll make them more the twofold child of hell than yourself. Matthew 23, 33. Bless, uh, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Luke 16, 23. In hell, he lift up his eyes being in torment. That, does that, that's Jesus' message. Amen. He wants to know what that has to do with Jesus' message. I, he must not know Jesus' message. Uh, what they do is they pick and choose what parts of the Bible they want to use to advance their ministry. And God is love, God is love, God is love, God is love. Listen, if all a man preaches is God is love and leaves out the, that God hates sin and God is wrath, he's not preaching the gospel. Amen. You have to preach both. You have to. I'll give you some more here. Listen to this. And, and to be honest, it's confusing for me. Well, you need to go to Bible school. Fourth grade Bible school, and you get straightened out on that. That's what college will do to you. People got mad at me because I mentioned something about college. Listen, I'm not against education, but education that turns your faith away from God ain't a million miles from God, y'all. Come on, people. Listen, brother, we're living in a time when they're taking our kids by the millions and turning their backs on God. God, help us. God, help us. We need the old-fashioned ways. We need the old-fashioned power. We need the old-fashioned spirit so that our kids and our grandkids can grow up saying, God's real, and my daddy's God's real, my grandpa's God's real, and my God's real. That's what we need. We need a bunch of junk like this. The preacher says, I just don't get it. Biblical trajectory, this world, this world being good and this world being reclaimed and restored. He said, Jesus, and Jesus said, heaven and hell is about this world. This world being good and this world being restored. And if you're having it bad, you're in hell. And if you're having it good, you're in heaven. But there's a lot of Christians I know having it bad. Dying with cancer. Are they in hell? And there's a lot of wicked people riding around in Rolls Royce with million dollars in the bank. Are they in heaven? Now, if a little country redneck like me can figure that out, you t what's wrong with these people? Listen to this. So, the, so if the Bible is a story, it's a story about this place. It's about this place, a place that God calls good, a place that God loves, a place... You're crazy, man. He said the Bible's a story about this place, Earth that God calls good. He called it good when he made it before sin came in. It ain't been good since. Created out of great joy and creativity. And How can I think that there's an... Now listen to this. Very well-known Christian author, Doug Padgett, writes Christian books, Christian celebrity. He's, he's, he's oohed and awed over all over the country. Do you think there's eternal damnation for people who are not Christians. In other words, he says, preacher, when a person dies without Jesus Christ, do they go to hell? Listen to this answer. Eternal damnation for people who are not Christians? Yeah, well, I think that there's, I think there's all kinds of, I mean, that, that the damnation would sort of be that, that there's parts of the life and creation that seem to be counter to what God is doing, and those are the things that are eliminated and removed and done away with. And so I think that's what Dan. Oh, so, whoa, 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 what? Whoa, look. Preacher, do you believe that somebody dies that's not a Christian, has eternal damnation, they go to hell? Answer. Well, I think that there's all kinds of, I mean, the damnation would sort of be at, there's parts of the life and creation that seem to be counter to what God is doing. Are you deaf? I'm going to tell you all something, and you better never forget me telling you this. If a man can't give you a straight answer, he's up to something, he's politicking. Yeah. 
He's trying to play both sides of him. If a man can't answer us, if a man can't look you right in the eye and say yes or no, something ain't right. Do you believe a person goes to hell? Yes or no, brother. Either they do or they don't. You know why he won't say, he don't believe they do, but you know why he won't say it? He'll lose followers that still believe the Bible. You know, we live in America and a man's got a right to believe anything he wants to. Anybody, you can believe anything you want to. You can believe that, that light there's God if you want to. It's a free country. You believe that flower there can save you from cancer? You, it's your business. I ain't, I ain't got no problem with you believing what you want to. What I got a problem with is they use a book they don't even believe to make a living off people that don't know no better and trick them. So there's people who want to live out that kind of, um, want to have that good judgment, the judgment of God in their life. I mean, you know, ju judgment in a biblical okay, sense, that, 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 God on, that God remakes the world. Listen to this. Hold on a second. I, have, I have no idea what you just said. Here's what, here's what I think hell is. Eternal damnation, God sends lawbreakers to a place where there's weeping, there's gnashing of teeth, a lake of sulfur, the worm never dies, eternal conscious torment. Agree or disagree? Disagree. What do you think hell is? I think hell is disconnection and disintegration with God. I think hell is disconnection and disintegration with God. If you believe that, you're a heretic. You're a heretic. That's not something we can budge on. That's non-negotiable. You say, well, how do you know? Because of what Jesus said. I'll give it to you in just a second. I agree with, where do I go when I die? So are you suggesting? Listen to this. He said, where do I go when you die? Look at his answer. Are you suggesting to me that heaven is actually a place? You gotta be kidding. Are you trying to ask me, do you actually go to a place when you die? Listen. To me that heaven is actually a place? When you say, where do I go? You're... ...to punish people and Jesus needing to save... He said, is heaven actually a place? Let me tell you what Jesus said. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again. Now who's right, Jesus or him? Jesus said there was a place on the other side of the grave. This man said, are you suggesting to me that heaven is an actual place? Jesus would sit there and say, I sure am, sir. And I go to prepare a place for them that are saved. And if I go, I will come again, receive them unto myself. That where I am, they may be also. Now this guy is saying that we're all wrong preaching the gospel that Jesus died to save us from mean old God. That's, that's their interpretation of it. From God, that isn't Christianity. That's not how you're supposed to tell that story. No, it sure ain't you, nut. He didn't die to save us from God. God loved us enough to give his son to pay the price for our sin so we could go to heaven. Can you understand that? Molly can understand it. How come a college educated guy can't? You know why? There's something wrong with higher education, brother, that undermines your faith in that book right there. Christianity's big and it's wide and people get to tell it in any way that they want. And I think we need some new language around all of this. Right? Listen to this. He said, I think we need to change our language, preachers. And here's what he says. Get rid of the word hell altogether. We need to have new ways to talk about these ideas because the old words, they're not working. Right? It's just simply not working. No matter if it is or not, you preach it anyway. Didn't work for Noah. Noah preached 120 years, didn't have but eight people saved, and that's his family. Right. You don't go by what's working. Right. You go by what he said. Right. If it works, hallelujah. If it don't, hallelujah. It'll cut some in, it'll cut some out. It's a double-edged sword. Yeah. Yeah. No one I know who uses hell and the idea of hell and the concept of hell feels very confident in it. Really? What a limited mentality that poor guy has. He's not very educated, is he? He said, nobody I know who uses the word hell is very confident in it. He, I mean, take him down here to let him meet Charles Worley. Take him down to meet Brother, Brother Kid over there in Kingsport. I take him to meet uh, Cody Zorn, CT, and, all, and Ralph. And, all, and you think they're not, you, listen, there's tens of thousands of preachers in this country that is confident there's a hell. He's just hanging around the wrong crowds, his problem. It's very, good about, it's very good about it. It's this made up phrase and word that I think we need to move beyond. Really? It's a made up phrase and word that we need to move beyond? Really? 
I think we not only need to drop the notion, I think we need to drop the word. You should never say the word hell and there should never be the notion brought up that anybody's going to suffer after they die. And personally, I don't think we can drop the notion until we drop the word. To both traditional... You're a heretic, buddy. Look at here. Tony might disagree on, on details, but I think we're both trying to find an alternative to both traditional universalism and the narrow, exclusive, exclusivist understanding of hell that unless you explicitly accept and follow Jesus, you are excluded from the eternal life with God and destined for hell. He said, we've got to get rid of that belief. We have to get rid of the belief that says you have to trust Jesus or you're going to hell. We've got to get rid of that. That's a devil making things like that. Universalism, in other words, when everybody's saved, and the narrow exclusivist understanding of hell that unless you explicitly accept... I think there's, some, there's something around 30,000 verses in the Bible. The word hell is used about 20 times. Well, you're nuts, too. It's 53. He just said there's 30,000 verses in the Bible and the word hell's only in there 20 times, so that should tell you something. What, what's it supposed to tell us? How many times God have to say something to make it right? If it's only in there one time, that means it's real and it's still there. If God only said there's a hell one time, say 53. So... What a slick crook. What a crook, brother, insinuating that if there really was a hell, God would have said it a whole bunch more than he did. I'm trying to tell God he didn't write that Bible right. So I think sometimes just the pure math on that is helpful for people, just the numbers. How's that helpful? How's the pure math on hell helpful? Okay, so that's where they put the dump. So there's a fire going to burn the trash. So when he even speaks of hell, he's using a real place that every oh yeah, it's the town dump right over. Hear that? Gehenna. Now that word Gehenna was used as a, as a picture of the town city dump. He's right. But what he's saying is that's hell. So he said when Jesus said hell, he's talking about something over here in the city dump where the fire burned day and night and never got out. And that's hell. Now, if you are a uneducated biblically and didn't grow up in church and didn't have a good Sunday school teacher and didn't have a Bible preacher, you'd say, oh, really? Well, I found out that hell, just Gehenna, it was the city dump, and Jesus said that's where they go because that, that worms that die and the, and the fire died not. Oh, so that's all hell is? I bet you there's somebody sitting in here right now saying, oh, my goodness, preacher, what if that really is right? I'm telling you, you better wake your little head up, people. You better get in your book and get off that phone. You better get in here Sunday night, Wednesday night, prayer meeting night. You better get in. You better get in. You better get in. Find out what's going on. You'll get deceived. Listen to this. Listen to this. Well, Southwest, right over there. Um, so I think that's very important. And for a lot of people, that can be very helpful. Cast into hell. Look at here. Here's what, you, here's what the Lord said. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. See, you can cast it in the city dump. You can throw the body in the city dump. Don't be afraid of them. And after that, after your body's dead, have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed, after you done dead, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Hell is something that's after you're dead, people. It's after you're dead. What, why, if it's a city dump, why would he have said that? Why would he have said, I tell you, y'all, you don't have to fear, you don't have to fear uh, dying or nothing, but you better fear them people could throw your body over in that, in that them pall bears that throws you over in the city dump. It don't matter what happens to your body after it's dead. He said, hell is a place, and it's a place too. The rich man said, Jesus Christ, quoting the rich man, said, lest they come into this place of torment. It's not a state of mind. It's not just having a bad life. Hell is a place and it's after you die. Now, if you can't understand that, you don't need to be in the pulpit preaching. And if you don't believe that, you don't need to be in the pulpit preaching. Go get you an honest job and work for a living. Yeah. Quit making money off people, a book you don't even believe. Cheating people and deceiving them. Look at here. Yea, I say unto you, 
fear him, but the righteous into eternal life. The wicked. We can bring hell to earth. We can bring heaven to earth and we can bring hell to earth. For Jesus, heaven and hell were present realities, ways of living we can enter into here now. That's heresy. He's a heretic. That's a lie. You can't bring heaven to earth. You can't bring hell to earth. I know people say, man, I'm going through hell. A guy told me that one time. He said, I'm in hell now. I said, no, you ain't. You can go right over and get you a drink of water. You ain't in hell. You ain't in hell. Hell is after you die. Heaven is after you die. We can't bring heaven to Jesus. For Jesus, heaven and hell were present realities. He's lying. Was not, was not, was not. For Jesus, heaven and hell were future after you die. I just quoted you two verses. Luke chapter 16, here in Matthew 23, about these verses of scripture. For Jesus, heaven and hell were present realities. Lie. Ways of living we can enter into here and now. Lie. It's not as alert as it used to be. The best way to sharpen it up is to put the... That's the way they used to preach. Brother Roloff. Put on it. I mean, put the word to it, see? When you heard a preacher I mean, preach, listen, that's how it preached. The Holy Spirit will quicken your mortal mind if you'll put enough the word of God in it. Amen. The thing is... We, most of us, and I don't mean to be critical, the Lord knows that, but most of us do not stay in the Bible enough to think Bible thoughts. That's right. I mean, you've got to live in the Bible. I mean, if you live in the newspaper, you'll talk newspaper. Come on. If you read magazines, you'll uh, be talking magazines. Right. And if you watch television, you'll be television. My brother, yep. whatever you give your mind to, you're going to have that That's kind right. of a mind and you know it. See the difference? Can y'all see the difference? You can't see the difference. You're mad, bad Jay. I think what Jesus had in mind was heaven and hell are here on earth. Here's Brother Olaf saying, if you live in the book, you'll think the book. If you live in the world, you'll think the world. If it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, goes waddles like a duck, it's a duck. And why no? Again. <laughs> Token the Holy Ghost in that church goal is to trance out the entire planet on the drunken glory. Transfer the entire planet to the drunken glory. I'm wholly hammered. Drunk on Jesus is what their bumper stickers say. Got to give it to them. They will at least put a sticker on their car. And, and really let them physically experience that there's no high like the most high. There's no high like the most high. I think it's blasphemy to compare the Lord to being high on drugs. I mean, out of, out of my body. Now, don't you listen to this testimony. I'm not being judgmental. Listen to his testimony of salvation. He said demons started coming out of his body and listen to how he got saved. I would see visions of where they'd been. I saw visions of Mesopotamia, saw ancient wars. It feels like literally 10,000 watts of electricity going over my whole body. I'm he felt like 10,000 watts of electricity is going through your body. That ain't salvation. No such thing as that in the Bible. You're not saved by feeling 10,000 watts of electricity. You're saved by faith, by grace through faith. Watch this. Literally more high at that point than I'd ever been. And I hear a voice speak over my head. He said, I will make you more high than all the drug addicts and I'll make them jealous of how high I get you. A voice from on high spoke and said, I'll make you higher than all the drug addicts and they'll be jealous of how high I get you. That was God talking to him? That wasn't. That wasn't. I'm just in utter disbelief and shock. Like everything in my life had just been washed clean. And I mean, I didn't say any fancy prayer. I didn't like, you know, read the Bible. Huh? I'd say no prayer, and no Bible. Anything like that, it was just, I got basically struck by lightning by a God I didn't even believe in. <laughs> Think about that, y'all. He said, I didn't, I didn't pray. I didn't read the Bible. I just got struck by lightning by God I didn't believe in. Look here, and I'll be through. The bottom line is God gets... There's probably the most popular Christian writer in America. Rick Warren started that purpose-driven church and purpose-driven movement, and that's what killed tens of thousands of Southern Baptist preachers. They went to his seminar about how to build a church, and they came back, and they said, we've got to talk positive, 
Uh, you got to get, get rid of this thing right here. Big old desk like that. That looks too authoritative. Let's, let's be more cool. Let's put on a, get a cool band. Let's all act cool. And the preacher, he got to be cool. You know, don't come out there condemning people. Tell them they're sinners. You ain't going to build no great work like that. Listen to what he says here. Pleasure watching you be you. Why? He made you. That's my girl. He said, God gets pleasure watching you be you. That ain't the Bible. The Bible don't say that. He's given a talk to tens of thousands and thousands of people. He has an opportunity to say, people, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. There's no other hope but the cross of Christ. That, at least Billy Graham told them that. Amen? People find fault with Billy Graham. At least he told them the right plan of salvation. Listen, listen to this. He has a chance to witness to a million people. You're using the talent and the ability that I gave you. So my advice to you is look at what's in your hand, your identity, your influence, your income, and say, it's not about me. It's about making the world a better place. Thank you. That was his talk. Here's my final words. Look at what's in your hands and look at your income and your ability and say, it's not about me. It's about making the world a better place. That is as far away from the gospel as you can possibly get. The gospel teaches there's no hope for this world in its present condition, that it's shot, and the only way out is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see that? That's heresy. That's heresy. You're not here to make the world a better place. You crazy? We ain't doing too good. I look at this issue that you are connected to Christ. So let's bow our heads together. I'm going to pray a prayer, and you can follow it silently in your mind. Let's pray. Wrong yes, things. Today I want to take the first step in preparing for eternity by getting to know you. Jesus Christ, I don't understand it all, but as, as much as I know how, I want to open up my life to you. I ask you to come into my life and make yourself real to me. And use this series in my life to help me know what you made me for. Thank you. Amen. Now, if you just prayed that prayer for the very first time, I want to congratulate you. You've just become a part of the family of God. Now, let me be real careful what I'm getting ready to say. You don't have to cry and scream, holler and fall on the floor to get, get saved. I know that. I ball my eyes out in the floor, laying prostate flat on, on, my, on my stomach. But you don't have to do that. It's very dangerous just to say words like that and then tell people, if you just said that, you just become a part of the family of God. Now look, people, I know you're not saved by emotion, but there's got to be some kind of conviction, some kind of conversion. They got You are a new creature in Christ. Something has to happen inside. That's why the Lord said, be born again. Born again. Now, I know everybody don't, I know, I know, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's wrong to lead somebody to the Lord in prayer. Like, I'm not saying that's wrong, but I'm saying when you totally leave anything out of it, just if you said them words, you're saved, that's a dangerous way to talk to people. As millions of people have said those words out somewhere, somebody out soul winning and didn't more get, more get saved than a billy goat. We'll stop right there. Give me the lights. I'll give you a few scriptures and we'll go. Give you something to think about tonight. Matthew 5, 22. You'll be shall in danger of hell fire. Matthew 5, 29. The, uh, uh, you better off, cut one of your hands off than enter into hell with uh, two hands. Or into heaven with one hand, enter into hell with two hands. Luke 12, 5. I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. I say unto you, fear him. If a man can't answer a straight question, he's hiding something, he's politicking. He's trying to make both sides. He's trying to make these Bible believers think, I believe like you, and he's trying to make these liberals think, I believe like you. That's what a politician does. A preacher don't have to politic. We, our job, look, y'all, I'm, I'm not job scared. I ain't afraid. I, Lord, 
fire me. I'll go start another church. Uh, you know, not, not really, but you know what I mean. I mean, I'm not scared of y'all. I'm not up here saying, well, I better not preach on this because, look, I can get up here any Sunday of the year and say anything in this book right here, and I know 99.9% of the people going here are going to say, hey, man, that's why you come here. That's why you come here. You know you're going to get the Bible. I feel sorry for a preacher that says, well, I can't preach on this because we've got rich people in the church and they don't believe in hell or they don't believe that lifestyle's wrong and I'm afraid I won't get, I'll lose my job and get run off or lose my retirement. That's pitiful. That's preaching for money. Amen. Preachers preaching for money ought to be ashamed of himself. You don't preach for money. You preach for the Lord and the Lord will take care of your needs. Amen? Amen. I don't preach for a paycheck. I don't, I don't preach for money. I pastor uh, and, y'all, and, and the church takes care of my needs and helps me and stuff, but you don't pay me for preaching. Good night, I preach whether well, you pay me or not. I ain't got nothing to do with it. That's right. I was preaching before most of y'all was born, and I'll be preaching when you're dead and gone. <laughs> but uh, seriously, seriously, we're living in a generation of hirelings, and there's jobs scared, afraid they're gonna get run off. And so they just give in. Or the crazy ones, like kicks a, a woman in the nose and the gift of faith come on you. He said, as soon as his boot hit her nose, the power of God fell on her. It's a wonder her husband didn't let the power of the devil fall on him. If he'd kicked my wife in the nose, I mean, my goodness. All right, camera's off. Question or two right quick, and we're done. Anybody? No, no. You're right, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going, there's no, no, no mention of the cross, there's no mention of the blood, there's no mention of death, burial, and resurrection. That wasn't even the gospel. 